in randomized clinical trials, drug-coated balloons are generally associated with superior anti-restenotic efficacy compared with plain balloons. However, these trials are powered only for surrogate endpoints or maybe composite endpoints, maybe some clinical and surrogate parameters. Moreover, the influence of target lesion type and long-term durability, these are all really poorly defined. And finally, no randomized trials have directly compared the different available drug-coated balloon devices. And so we're kind of left with a lot of questions. This time, Gent is taking a look at drug-coated balloon versus plain balloon angioplasty for the treatment of femoral popliteal disease. It's an updated systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized clinical trials. So Dr. Robert Byrne is here, MD, PhD, and uh, you were largely responsible for this. Thanks, first off, for coming and chatting. So we do have to know a lot more, and what have you done to kind of answer some of these questions for us? Yeah, well, uh, thanks very much for the inv invitation to be here today and maybe uh, share with you some of the key points from our research uh, paper, which was, uh, I think, a, a big task. It's a detailed meta-analysis uh, carried out by a, a large team, including uh, Dr. Giacopo, who's uh, the first uh, author and performed a lot of uh, work on this project. Um, Drug-coated balloon, of course, is something we're hearing more and more about in interventional cardiology and in, uh, in peripheral vascular disease. Uh, and those of us who were involved in investigating this technology from the beginning, I think we're a little bit skeptical that a simple balloon inflation uh, of a balloon coated with paclitaxel could deliver uh, durable results. Um, like you highlighted in your introduction, I suppose when we talk about uh, femoropopliteal disease or the Claudigant uh, population, um, the uh, data that we have supporting drug-coated balloon generally comes from studies with uh, surrogate endpoints. So we thought uh, we would like to update uh, the meta-analysis uh, in light of the eight randomized control trials that are available and look specifically at clinical restenosis or uh, target lesion uh, revascularization. So that was the primary endpoint that we looked at. Given the skepticism out there, what did you find? Yeah. So I suppose uh, in terms of target lesion revascularization, we saw a clear reduction, a overall 67% reduction in target lesion revascularization. And probably uh, this is no great surprise when we look at the data over the last uh, uh, five, seven, eight years that's come out, because uh, we were seeing a consistent reduction in the surrogate endpoints and a meta-analysis that we uh, in our group, uh, Dr. Cassese, performed uh, about four years ago uh, showed already a movement in this direction. But now with more trials, with, uh, with eight studies, we're seeing a consistent uh, reduction in target lesion revascularization, as I said, around about two-thirds uh, reduction, which is substantial. However, one thing that we found, and it was worth looking at in a little bit more detail, was significant heterogeneity uh, when you looked at uh, the effect. And uh, this is a signal that we need to look uh, more deeply into the data and see what's causing this uh, heterogeneity in terms of the primary outcome. And uh, one thing uh, that we did find is that it seemed that if you remove two of the studies, the uh, Leviant 1 and Leviant 2, that you weren't getting this heterogeneity uh, signal uh, anymore. And uh, you might ask, well, why might that be? I think there's two possible reasons. One is that uh, not all drug-coated balloons are, are, are work uh, to the same extent, and that's not a great surprise. But two, of course, the studies are conducted in a different manner, maybe with the Leviant 1 and Leviant 2, even with a greater degree of scientific rigor, if you were to look objectively at it. And that might have accounted for some of the heterogeneity we saw in the primary endpoint. Now, these trials spanned a period of time, so we're talking about really first-generation and second-generation devices combined. Yeah. Now, eventually we'll get to the third generation, but the fact that we're seeing this kind of a response in the first two, it's pretty encouraging. You know, it's pretty encouraging, and I think that's consistent with uh, the day-to-day -day experience of people working in clinical uh, practice with these devices. There was one concern, and uh, that was the focus of one of our secondary analyses, uh, and there was an adverse signal in terms of mortality or safety uh, endpoint in uh, one of the studies. And uh, for this reason, uh, one of the primary secondary, or one of the uh, secondary endpoints that we looked at was uh, mortality. And here, 
we saw really overall a very neutral effect on mortality. I think the uh, hazard ratio we had was 0.96, so uh, really a neutral effect. And this is, of course, reassuring in terms of safety, uh, in terms of efficacy. I think you're not really expecting uh, these procedures necessarily to have a direct impact on mortality in uh, these often uh, uh, comorbid uh, patients. I, one of the conclusions you have here is uh, trial sequ sequential analysis indicated that available evidence is sufficient to prove superior anti restenotic efficacy of drug coated balloon over a plain balloon. Yeah. Are you looking forward to trying to convince other people of this now? Because I think there's still some skepticism out there. Yeah, I think. Um as I said, when we initially embarked on investigating these devices, we had a certain degree of skepticism ourselves. We performed our own randomized uh, control trials uh, in the coronary area and were quite impressed by the results, and so much so that it really has influenced our practice. And uh, when we deal with instant restenosis in the coronary, uh, in the coronary area, our, the first thing we go to is the, is the drug-coated balloon. The trial sequential analysis you alluded to, I think, was an interesting exercise to look at the data and say, okay, do we need more studies in this direction, or uh, can we be confident that uh, these drug-coated balloons are generally better than uh, balloon angioplasty? I think looking at the data from a statistical point of view, we can be confident that they're better. That would uh, lead us to believe that uh, straightforward comparison against plain balloon angioplasty, at least with these devices, is not really required. And it may be more interesting in the future to compare them against other local drug delivery devices, such as, of course, drug eluting stents. And finally, where do you tend to use this? Yeah. So I think uh, the data from our analysis, as I said, is uh, supporting primarily the Claudicant uh, population. So these are patients who have lung diffuse disease in the uh, femoropopliteal uh, tract. Uh, the area with uh, below the uh, data with in relation to below the knee with uh, relation to critical limb ischemia still uh, requires significant study. Yeah, it's been a little more disappointing there. Yeah. We have more, more miles to go. Yeah. This is uh, Jack Intervention, so please check out the uh, August 22nd issue. And for Cardiosource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.